from the Barbados Today Newsroom. This is your news update for Friday, September 10. A 66-year-old Barbadian woman died this morning at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. According to health authorities, the woman had an underlying condition and spent 14 days in the primary isolation before passing away. She was unvaccinated. Her death brings to 52 the number of persons who have died from the virus. Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, has expressed sincere condolences to the family and friends of the deceased. Meanwhile, new COVID cases top 100 today. The Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory confirmed that 108 persons, 51 males and 57 females, tested positive from 1,582 tests conducted on Thursday. Of these new cases, 83 persons are 18 years and older, while 23 are under the age of 18. There are two persons whose ages are unknown. There are now 690 persons in isolation. Since the start of the pandemic, Barbados has recorded 5,759 confirmed cases of the virus. Popular hotspot Oyston's Bay Gardens has been closed after one vendor reportedly tested positive for the viral illness. Head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, confirmed he is aware of a positive case, but noted that the Ministry of Health did not close any stores. Chapman, however, noted that contact tracing is ongoing. Several operators are, however, upset that their businesses are closed, noting they will lose revenue. The nation's doctors today call on Barbadians to be more responsible to help curb the spread of the coronavirus. In a statement, President of the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, President Dr. Linda Williams, said the association is not entirely surprised by the surge in the COVID-19 infection rates linked to the highly contagious Delta variant. She urges Barbadians to comply with the additional measures announced by Prime Minister Mia Motley on Thursday to halt the spread of the viral illness. We are therefore calling upon Barbadians to play their part. Come out and be vaccinated against COVID-19 and help us to reduce the amount of transmission of the virus within the society. The measures which have been renounced by our Honourable Prime Minister, which restrict movement and gathering, will only be effective if they are followed by all members of society, along with the non-pharmaceutical interventions such as wearing masks properly, hand sanitization, and physical distancing. Reduce unnecessary trips outside of the home. Eat healthily, exercise, get good sleep, take your medication for your chronic diseases, and monitor your blood pressure and blood sugar where it is appropriate to do so. Meanwhile, the business community is worried about rising coronavirus infections. President of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Anthony Branker, warned there's still too much gathering at rum shops and bars. He called for a crackdown on such activities. And those individuals are putting our businesses at risk and the island at risk. And therefore, whatever resources are needed to police those type of areas, we are asking the authorities to put the necessary resources in place to stamp out some of the irresponsible activity taking place in some of these places. From tomorrow, a new curfew will take effect from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Monday to Saturday and 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. on Sundays. Branker is concerned that businesses will feel the pinch. The curfew, regrettably, will impact businesses. Uh, there's no doubt that places like restaurants, will be severely affected. I think that our membership understands that we are taking this pause for the good of the majority. And we, we are hoping that all persons will play their part so that we wouldn't have to go this route again. In other news this Friday, the public will get a chance to grade the performance of the Royal Barbados Police Force and share their views with experts who will determine if the law enforcement agency should again receive international accreditation for best practices. The force was last approved by the United States-based Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies in 2017. Deputy Commissioner of Police Irwin Boyce told a press conference today the public will be able to tell the assessors how they feel about the RPBS work via a dedicated telephone line on Tuesday, September 14, between 1 and 3. They can also join a meeting of the accreditation team that same day at 5 p.m. on the Zoom platform. He's confident that the Royal Barbados Police Force has been improving its operations. I know for sure that we, uh, we, we, we practice, our practice is, has, has a level of acceptance at international level. 
So whether it's human rights, whether it is uh, the way we collect evidence, the way we manage evidence, the way we, we, we train our police, there's a level of acceptance at that, at that level. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news in Grenada, vendors say they are feeling the pinch from the current lockdown and they are appealing to government for urgent help. More on this report from GBN Television. Grenada's second wave of the coronavirus pushes active cases up, surpassing the 1,000 mark once again affecting the livelihoods of many. In recent days, the Ministry of Health advised the population to refrain from traveling unless it was necessary to curb the spread of the Delta variant in Grenada. The revised emergency regulations listed some businesses that would be allowed to remain open. The spectrum mainly covered organizations in manufacturing, healthcare, and related services. Vendors are among those filling the pinch. Robots, we need help. How you survive? No place no breaking, nothing no happening. We don't come in and just beg you for nothing just so. We go and climb skin up tree, we go and climb mango tree to look for honest dollar, we don't break in no place. We just ask in, Prime Minister, the media, everybody, beast everybody, just give us a, yes, a little, you know, blind on the street just to make a little dollar to survive, please. The police have to be a little more lenient with us, a little, little more lenient. I mean, we know well. We need some social distancing and sanitizing and so on. How much people would come to the market? I had to have my own little line on the sidewalk, enough store closed. I could block out in front of a little store and have a little business going on for the day still. From 5 p.m. Friday, no one but essential workers on duty are allowed to leave the yard space until 5 a.m. Monday. The same applies to the following weekend. This was announced by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell at his last address to the nation as one of the new protocols stipulated under the COVID-19 regulations. On the international scene, after weeks of being hammered by opposition leaders for calling elections during the fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, Liberal leader Justin Trudeau is standing firmly behind his decision. At a press conference today, Trudeau was asked if he has any regrets about triggering the election and sending Canadians to the polls. Absolutely not. I think what we see is a very clear contrast between all the different parties on how we need to move forward as a country. And this is a time when Canadians should get to be very clear about how they want to end this pandemic, how they want to build back better for the future. Because whichever government they elect is going to be making decisions in the coming months, not a year from now, not two years from now, but now but how we move forward. And that is what Canadians get to decide. And I'm looking forward to working with Canadians on even more ambition, on climate change, with concrete plans, on childcare at $10 a day, on strengthening gun control. These are the things that Canadians get to choose on because the choice couldn't be more clear. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.